Filmic Pro is one of our top recommended camera apps for iPhone and Android, and there've been some pretty big updates since we released our last Filmic tutorial. So in this video, we're doing a complete updated Filmic Pro tutorial using all the latest features to help you shoot videos like a pro on your smartphone. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, if you haven't used it yet, Filmic Pro has consistently been one of our favorite iPhone and Android camera apps. It's packed with a ton of features and it instantly unlocks DSLR-like settings on your iOS or Android camera. Now, at first glance, the huge range of features in there can be overwhelming, but don't worry, it really only takes a few quick, simple settings to totally level up your videos with your Android or iPhone. And we're gonna cover everything you need to start getting awesome results with the latest Filmic Pro version, step-by-step, -step right now. And as an added bonus, once we're done with the walkthrough, I'm also gonna cover a bonus tip to show you how you can easily monitor your shoot while you're shooting with the rear phone camera, the one on the back. So when your screen is facing away from you, this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Okay, so here we are in Filmic Pro. Now, I'm just showing you this on an Android device, but the process and the interface and everything is going to be exactly the same on your iOS devices as well. Now, I'm gonna start out first by going through the settings by pressing this little button down here to get everything set up ready for shooting before we jump into the interface and before I show you how all of this stuff works. So the first thing you wanna set is your resolution. So we come up here to resolution. Now, in here, you've got lots of different options and some phones or some devices will have have more options in here than others. Across the top here, you can add different overlays on your videos. So if you wanna add some cinematic black bars to your videos, you can do that here. Or if you actually wanna crop your video down to a specific size, say a one by one video for something like Instagram, then you can select the size that you'd like and just make sure that this crop source to overlay is selected here and that will actually produce you a one by one sized video. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep this back at 16 by nine. And this is pretty much where I leave this setting. Now below that, we get to choose our video resolution. So you can see here it's set at 1080p. We can go all the way back to SD, 540p. And on this device, we have the ability to go up to 4K, 2160p. So you can set that here. Now down below that is where we actually get to choose the quality of that video. And once again, we've got settings all the way back from economy, standard, filmic quality and filmic extreme. Now, filmic quality and filmic extreme are higher quality video recordings than you would get in most cases out of the built-in camera app on your device. So that's one of the biggest standout features with Filmic Pro is that you get to record at higher quality recordings than what the built-in camera apps let you do. So for me personally, I'll either shoot in 4K 2160p or back in 1080p. I'll usually leave the quality at filmic quality unless I need the absolute best recording that I can get. Filmic quality is still really, really good. And then below that, we get to choose the video codec. So the default here is AVC, but we can also choose HEVC or high efficiency video codec as well. So I'm gonna leave this as AVC. And if your device supports it, you can also enable HDR video recording here as well. Now to go back to the previous menu screen, we just tap on the screen somewhere outside of the menu and we're taken back. So once you've got your resolution locked in, we'll come across to frame rate. And here obviously is where we can pick our frame rate. Everything from 24, you can see right up to 240 on this specific device at that 1080p resolution. You've also got time-lapse functionality in here as well if you wanna create some time-lapses. We'll just go back to standard now. So you wanna go ahead and pick your frame rate. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave this at 24 frames per second. Now, what I would recommend is that for most people here, your capture frames per second and your playback frames per second should be set to be the same. So you can see I've got 24 across all three of those there. Now this auto shutter feature down the bottom here is handy if you're getting flickering from any lights in your scene a lot of fluorescent or even some LED lights will create a strobing or flickering effect in your video. So if you come down here to auto shutter, then you get to set this to either 50 Hertz shutter. So if you're in Australia or the UK, then you'll be setting this to 50 Hertz to remove that flicker. Or if you're in the US or Canada, you can set this to 60 Hertz shutter. So I'm in Australia, I'm gonna leave this at 50. 
Again, we'll just tap off the menu to go back. Now we're gonna look at audio. Now I currently don't have an external microphone plugged in or any Bluetooth microphones or anything connected to my phone at this point. So my only option here at the moment is just to use the camera microphone. When you do plug in a microphone, you will be able to switch here from camera microphone to external and it will usually default to external microphone for you when there is one plugged in. If you don't wanna record audio, then you can just select here, video only, and that's what you're gonna get. I will disable that now. Let's go back a menu, jump into device. Now there's a heap of settings in here and we're not gonna run through them all, but the ones that I like to set are the orientation lock so that if you rotate your phone while filming, it's not going to rotate the entire camera app. So for me, I like to lock it to widescreen or horizontal and know that that's not going to change throughout the recording. So you can see there's lots of different settings in here. The other one I usually leave on as well is the mute notification so that when you're actually recording your videos, you're not getting notifications and stuff pop up on your screen. And you've also got things in here like noise reduction. So if you're gonna be filming in low light conditions where the footage is looking pretty noisy or grainy, then you can enable this noise reduction. And it does do a pretty good job at cleaning up your footage. Now from here, I would come down here to stabilization and I would turn that on or off, depending on if you want that image stabilization on. It actually does a really good job on the devices I've checked it on. So if I'm gonna be moving around, I will enable that. Then you wanna select your camera. So if we come across to camera here, then this is where we can choose Again, depending on your device, whether you want the front facing camera or one of the rear cameras. So whether it's the ultra wide, the wide, the mid, the telephoto, whatever options you've got on your phone, you should be able to select those in here. So we're gonna leave this one here on mid, which is the standard camera on this device. Okay, so now that we have most of the things set up for our video, we've got the resolution, frame rate, audio, and everything is all set the way that we'd like it. I'll come over here to presets. And in here, this is where we can actually save a preset based on all of those settings that we have just set up. So let's just go save current values to preset. Let's give it a name, let's call it JB, done. So now next time I open up this app, I don't have to run through those settings again. I can just open up this profile here, JB, and all of those settings are going to be set there. So this means you could actually have different presets set up for different resolutions or even for different cameras. So if you're using the front selfie camera, you might want your resolution to be different or your frame rate to be different depending on the types of videos you're creating with those presets. So having this ability and having these presets in here is an amazing feature. Now, while we're still in the settings menu here, if we come across to hardware, there's some really cool integrations with Filmic Pro and some devices like gimbal stabilizers like the DJI Osmo Mobile 1 and 2 or the Zion and smooth four. And it even gives you the ability to enable anamorphic adapters and those sorts of things with your videos as well. So all of that stuff is in here under hardware. Okay, so let's back out of this now and skip back to our shot. Now in terms of the actual interface, obviously we can see the audio bars there on the right hand side, which is the visual indicator of the audio that you're going to be recording. So you can quickly see first off that you are recording audio, but also you can see if it's too loud or too quiet. Now to adjust the volume, you wanna come down to this big box here and you can see if I'm just tapping on this box and sliding to the left and to the right, that we're able to adjust that volume level, that little white indicator that's moving along below my pointer. So if I go all the way to the left, volume is going to be right down, you can see we've gone to nothing. If I bring that back up, we're able to increase or boost the volume to where we would like it. Now over on this side of the shot here, this slider here is to zoom in and out. So if we grab this and move it up, we're able to zoom in on our shot and likewise pull it down and zoom back out. This big round button here is our record button to start the recording. This one here will let us play back and view all of our clips that we've recorded. I've already spoken about the settings button. Next to that here is our storage indicator. We can see how much free space we have left on our device. We've also got our battery level indicator here as well. And then next to that, you can see we've got our time codes. So and when we start recording, we can see how long we've been recording for. And there's also a really quick visual indicator or display here of your frames per second and your resolution to make sure that you are recording at the right settings for you. Now, if we tap on this area, you can see that we're actually able to bring up some histograms and scopes and those sorts of things to give us more insight into the video we are creating. So you can just tap on that to cycle through those. Now, next to that, over this side here, this little A button here, this will bring up all of our overlays. So we've got things in here like focus peaking, so we can easily see what's in focus. And we've got some other overlays and things across the top here that we can enable to really help us dial in the exposure and also the focus of our shot. So we've got our zebra lines there as well. Now next to that, this one down here is where we can jump into our more advanced control 
for exposure, focus, and zoom. Now, before I show you the advanced ones, I'll show you the very basic settings here first. Let's turn this off. So you can see on the middle of our screen here, we've got a big box around the outside, and we've also got a little box here on the inside. The little one here is our focus box, and the outside one here is our exposure box. So if we want to adjust the focus, I'll say bring my hand in here now. Let's, let's grab this focus box, let's point it on my hand and you can see the focus is adjusted to my hand. Now, if we tap on that, that's going to lock the focus at that point. So no matter where we move our camera or anything now, the focus is now locked at that point. To unlock it, we can just tap on it and we go back to autofocus. So in this case here, we might wanna lock it onto the microphone here, move it over that area, tap it, it's now locked at that point. So very similar with the outside box, with the exposure box, we could reposition our shot, move it around to get the exposure that we want. Let's say we like the brightness there, let's lock it there by tapping the outside, reposition our shot, and we've now locked the focus and the exposure, so neither of those are going to change throughout our shot. Now this method here, as I said, is really, really basic. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock these now. And let's go over to the manual settings, which are down here. So on this left-hand side here, we've got our exposure control. And on the right-hand side here, we have our zoom and focus control. And these are essentially little wheels or sliders that you can just grab and slide up and down to brighten or to darken your shot. So with these brightness settings here on the left, we actually have the ability to lock down or to dial in specific settings that we might want. So if I wanna lock my shutter speed at one over 50, I'll just tap on one over 50. Shutter speed's not gonna change then. And now this slider bar here just becomes the ISO adjustment. So he's moving this around until we get the shot that we're after. So for me personally, I'll normally be setting this around one over 50 and then adjusting here the ISO to get the shot to the correct exposure for what I'm looking for. And likewise with the focus here, if you really wanna dial in your shot, then you have that ability here for both the focus and the zoom. And you can switch between them just by tapping on the screen here. Now to get back out of this, we'll just tap on the screen anywhere. And you can see that we've locked down our focus and our exposure because both of them are red on screen. Now the last thing you wanna lock down before you shoot so it's not changing and adjusting while you're shooting is your white balance. So that's down the bottom here under this three colored circle icon. So we'll press on that. Now in here you've got access to presets for white balance along the bottom here. So if there's one of these that matches the lighting conditions of the area you're gonna be filming in, then one of these presets may work well for you. Or you can come back over to auto to get an automatic reading. And if that works for what you're after, then if you tap it again, you can see it goes red and your white balance is locked at that point. So you can start from auto, you don't have to manually dial something in. But if you do want to put in a specific color temperature, then you can use the sliders here to get the specific Kelvin rating and you can adjust the tint of the shot here as well. So that's the first area here, white balance. There's two other menu areas in here as well, which are included or unlocked in the cinematographer kit, which is an additional purchase on top of Filmic Pro. So if we press on this one here, this is gonna give us access to different color profiles. You can see default here is natural. We can switch to a dynamic. We can switch to a flat profile, or there's even the ability to shoot your videos in log here as well. And you can customize this up to really get the look that you're after, especially if you're gonna be color grading it afterwards in your editing software. So I'll reset this now and go back to defaults. And the bottom one down here is where we can adjust the saturation or the vibrance of our shot. So you can see if we want to boost some of the colors here, we can just increase the vibrance. Likewise, if we want to remove some colors in our shot, then we can slide it back the other way and go full black and white if you'd like to. So just reset this, get it back to 100. So once you've got all your settings ready, all you need to do is press the record button here and record your video masterpiece. Now I've quickly switched over to iPhone to show you one more amazing feature that I did mention at the start of this video, which will allow you to remotely monitor and control your primary Filmic Pro camera app, camera device. Now this is currently out on iPhone and they do have it out in beta on Android. So it is coming really, really soon. But for this, you will need to purchase the Filmic Remote app, which again is an additional purchase. So once you've purchased the Filmic Remote app on your primary camera, you wanna come down to settings, go over to device and enable remote control. Then on your secondary device, an iPad or another phone that you might have that you've downloaded and installed the Filmic Remote app on, you wanna open that up, make sure they're both on the same network and you can see here, Justin Brown's iPhone. So if we press on that, we'll grant access back on the phone. Let's go always allow. And then my main phone or camera can now be controlled remotely 
from the iPad with access to all the same settings and everything that we just ran through, but you're doing it remotely from a secondary device. So this is an amazing tool for content creation, especially for someone who's creating their videos solo to be able to sit in front of camera, frame everything up, make sure everything is the way that you want it and everything is set up correctly and looking good without the need to have someone else there helping you out with this. Now, in regards to pricing, the Filmic Pro app is currently selling in the App Store for $14.99, which given the amount of advanced features and control and everything in it, I do think it is an absolute no-brainer. To unlock the cinematographer kit, those advanced color profiles and log mode and everything, it is an additional in-app purchase of $13.99, and the Filmic Pro Remote app is currently selling as well for $14.99. So again, an amazing add-on app if you're someone who wants to have that additional functionality of being able to monitor and control everything from a secondary device. So even adding up the three purchases, I still think this is an absolute no-brainer for someone looking for a really powerful tool to create their videos to unlock all of this advanced functionality with their smartphone and also make it much easier for you to shoot your videos, especially if you're doing it solo with that remote app. So that is a complete walkthrough of Filmic Pro. Now that you've got your filming sorted, it's time to turn your iPhone or Android into the ultimate video creation powerhouse. Check out the videos we've got linked on screen to see our reviews of the best video editing apps on both platforms that will give you desktop-like video editing functions right on your device. And I'll see you in the next one.